Hey, welcome to Response, a talk about true worship. Today I'm so excited because our guests and I are going to be discussing the topic of corporate worship and private worship. What is the difference and why are they both so important? So you're going to want to stick around for that. Hi, my name is Johnny Zaccio, and I'm the Worship Ministry Coordinator here at Calvary Chapel Bible College in Marietta, California, and today I'm so excited to have with us um, a mentor of mine and just such an amazing friend, um, Pastor Jason Duff. I'm excited to have you here with us, so thank you for taking the time to answer these questions and to talk about this topic. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Awesome. Because the privilege is mine. Great. Well, I, I would just love to start with um, just sort of like a, an about you. Like, tell us a little bit about where you've been in ministry. Where are you at now, and and may, maybe where do you see the Lord leading um, for future things, and where, where do you see the Lord taking you and your, the ministry you're currently serving at? Yeah. Well, I started out at Calvary Chapel Bible College. This is where I was at, and then was a youth pastor at Calvary Chapel Vista, and then in 2004 planted a Calvary Chapel out in Paris, Texas, and did that for about seven years before God called my family and I back to Southern California to be an associate pastor. And then in the last three years, I've been out in the desert, took over a non-denominational church out there called the Garden Fellowship. And it's just a joy to be able to experience with a group of people what I've been poured into my whole life, to be able to elevate both the teaching of the Word of God and the worship of God's name for a congregation that uh, just loves Jesus. It's a real joy and privilege. That's awesome. And so now, I, I remember in the past, you've, you'd mentioned that there was some experience um, in like the worship ministry side of things. I mean, being a, probably being a senior pastor of a newer church or something, probably you have to step in and do some of those things or maybe run us through your experience with maybe worship. And Yeah, I mean, I, I, when I came to Bible college, I didn't play guitar or sing or do anything. Uh, but my roommate here at Bible college was Jeremy Camp. And then I was uh, Scott Cunningham's assistant for years in youth ministry. Mm. So you can't live or work with those guys for too long <laughs> without learning how to pick up some chords. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I learned in that time to play guitar. And when I was at the church in Texas, mm. I would actually lead worship for our Wednesday night service. So oh. I do have some, some, some experience leading worship on Wednesday nights and doing that. But I'm, I'm really glad to be at a stage of my life where I, I let the people God has called <laughs> to yeah. that position be able to be the worship leaders. So. Great. Yeah, so then your primary thing is, is really just shepherding the flock of God, teaching them the Word of God. And something I, I know known about you and something that, of course, I've observed over the years of you being my Bible college teacher is that you, you display a life of personal worship to God, but you also have a very great gifting as a shepherd to lead the corporate worship of God, being at your church and observing that as even just during the time of prayer or communion you're you're there still facilitating and i know i view a senior pastor especially the one that i'm serving under as more of the worship leader than i am mm -hmm. as you're facilitating this this corporate time of of praise um so i i guess i would just want to make a distinction between those two things and sort of ask your opinion how do you go about distinguishing between the personal side of our worship to god because i believe the scripture does talk about that side but then also the corporate side of worship to God. And how do you go about distinguishing that? And how do they, how do they work hand in hand as well? It's a great question. You know, I think obviously for both pastors and worship leaders, worship pastors, uh, both have to be essential because if, as a worship leader, there's no personal worship of Jesus, that it's not it's not something that's personal and real for you. Uh, it's the akin it's it's akin to me as a pastor, uh, not ever really reading the Bible for myself or not ever talking to God for myself. My only prayer life is when I'm in front of a congregation, or the only time I yeah. I interact with the Word of God is when I'm teaching it to people. There, there'd be such hypocrisy in that, and if if it wasn't hypocrisy, there would certainly be a shallowness in that. Mm -hmm. 
And so I, I think with worship, it's the same way. It's got to start where we love to worship Jesus, whether as a worship leader, as a pastor. I mean, we both better both love to worship Jesus. And I think, you know, for me personally, that works out where, you know, my, my deepest worship times are certainly not uh, in front of the congregation on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night. My deepest worship times is usually when it's me alone in the guitar, in, in the car and it's time to, to mm. put on, you know, what, what the Lord is just ministering in my heart right now on my iPod and just be able to worship and pour out my heart to the Lord. But because that's present, then yes, when we're worshiping together corporately, uh, it comes out, just like my personal time with Jesus in the Word comes out in my teaching, I hope. Uh, so does when we corporately get together to worship, because I love God. I really do. It's not a show. And so when I'm there on, on stage, I want to help the, the people uh, express their love for God, too. And because it's real for me personally, it's a lot easier then to, to encourage and challenge you know, the people that are there in the church to, uh, to be a part of it as well. And, and as you know, because you, you've, you've led worship at, at the church that I pastor before, you know, I really, I really love those times where I'm on stage with the worship team. Some pastors stray away from that, and that's okay. That's their personality. But, but I, I think, you know, I'd like to be Kirk Franklin in my next life, and so just to be there and <laughs> shout and have a great time. And so yeah. I, you know, I'm usually the guy that's like, "Come on, church, and, and let's yeah. get going and, and get them together," because it, to me, it's so exciting to worship Jesus. It's mm -hmm. so, it so touches the deepest part of my heart to be able to worship Jesus, mm -hmm. and I want everybody to be able to. Experience experience that. Yeah. So I, I would love to ask, um, how would you encourage somebody if they're thinking, okay, okay, but what does this personal side of worship look like day to day? Um, are there specific spiritual disciplines that um, I should start praying through and implementing into my, my daily life to, to help cultivate this personal worship to God? Maybe it's something from your life that you know has helped you grow that, or what, what would you say to that? Yeah, I think that from the very practical side, it, it needs to be something I think that is that is daily or at least very often a part of our day. So, you know, when, when it starts with, you know, my, my relationship with, with the Word of God, you mm. know, every day I want to open it up and I want to hear God for myself. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to read the passage I'm teaching on. <laughs> I want to, I want to read, I want to hear God speak to me. Now, it'll often improve my teaching on the passage I'm teaching on, but but I, I want to have that time with Him. Yeah. I, I think having time where I'm talking to Him about my day is so important because if I'm not talking to Him about the struggles I'm facing, well, then I'm just going to figure it out on my own and that's disastrous. Mm -hmm. But then a third kind of a, you know, the third pillar of that is to have time where I'm, where I'm worshiping. And, 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 and why, again, why I think this is so important is you realize all that Jesus has done for us. And I know that John 4 says that God is spirit and he's looking for people to worship him in spirit and in truth. And so if that is what my God is looking for, it's not to check a box off to say, man, I've done this this week. I've accomplished my personal worship, but I feel so lucky that God loves me. I feel so blessed that he's forgiven me my sin. And so there needs to be regular times. Now, I, I own a guitar, I play guitar. So it's kind of easy for me to grab it in the mornings, to get a quiet place in my house and just worship the Lord. Uh, I realize that some people don't have that advantage. They don't, play, they don't play guitar. But I love the world we live in where literally anybody can be your worship leader. You can, it's really key, especially when it comes to worship, to take advantage of of the times that we do have in this world. You know, in the first century, when Peter was going from, you know, Joppa to Caesarea, he had a three-day walk in front of him. So there's a lot of quiet time with the Lord. We don't live in that world anymore, and there's a lot of advantages of that, but we've got to take advantage to where every time I'm in the car, what am I listening to? Is it is it the latest information on talk radio, which there's nothing bad or evil about that mostly, but but am I taking that advantage to say, I got... I have five minutes where I can I can put on a worship song and just express to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I know for me as a pastor, and we just challenge and encourage worship pastors, pastors alike, there's something different when I roll into church and 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 on my drive into church, I've already been worshiping the Lord. Like I already have that on my car radio and stereo, just worshiping the Lord. So I'm ready because as soon as I get in the door, people want to know, hey, this needs to be signed. This needs to go over here. Sound check is in five minutes. It's like all this work that comes on. And uh, it's really important that this that I use the time that God has given me wisely mm -hmm. to have a personal worship relation with the Lord, whether that, again, is five minutes on the drive to work, whether that is, you know, an, an afternoon that you get where you can take a little bit of your lunch break and go to the park and just put on some headphones, worship the Lord. But, to, but to, we really have to fight in in this world we live in to find those quiet moments but if we don't we're going to be no good to the people that God has called us wow. to serve
Wow, yeah, that that's so important. That's so vital, and it's gonna carry into the into the corporate. That that's what's gonna like. I remember talking to a guy who was saying, you know, I feel like I can't express to God in my in the corporate setting. I look at the people around me, and I get discouraged because of how they're expressing to God. And I just feel like I don't have that faith. How come they're there at that place? And I just lovingly just put my arm around this brother and said, hey, man, I said, continue to pursue worship of God personally. Right. And when you get here, it's that much easier. It just overflows, right? It's, right. Yeah. Practice in, in a sense, you know. You're practicing the <laughs> You're presence. Practicing of, yeah. the presence of God. You're coming into God's presence alone, and it makes it a lot easier and more meaningful when you're together corporately, for sure. Amen. Yeah, that's so good. Um, so why would you say then that the corporate, if we're like taking it to the, so you just explained how vital it is to have that personal life of worship to Jesus. Now, how would you encourage somebody in that corporate side of worship? Because there are those that would say, well. I, ha I have my personal worship. Why do I need a corporate worship time? Mm -hmm. I have my podcast, and I have a time where I sing by myself. I have me and Jesus, and I don't need church, mm -hmm. or I don't need the... So what is so vital about the life of a Christian? Like, Why is it so uh, vital for a corporate worship life yeah. as well? Well, I think in the same way, you know, we, we are as a society, we have the ability where I can go to church anywhere because every church, you know, worth its salt has an online ministry, a podcast ministry. So I can have anybody be my teacher. I can have anybody be my worship leader, my own personal worship leader in my car. Uh, I can do all those kind of things. But, but the book of Hebrews encourages us to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Mm -hmm. And we see the vitality of the early church in the book of Acts. I'm sure when they were alone. I mean, Peter had a great relationship with God by himself. But when they got together as the church, something different and supernatural begins to happen. There's a, there's a stoking of one another. From, from the pastoral side, just like I feel like it's my job to teach the people the word of God, so I feel like it's my job and the worship leader's job to teach the people how to worship because not everybody has that experience naturally. Yeah. And so how to learning how to express to God, learning how mm -hmm. to, you know, if it's a congregation that does this, to, to lift their hands and surrender, to, to have it go beyond what, what sometimes is just uh, routine in traditional church, mm -hmm. to really have an intimate worship relationship with God. It's our job to teach that. But beyond just my job as a pastor to do it, why I need to be there as an individual and why we need to get together is, is there something that supernatural happens in my heart? Because as a human being, I, I go through moments in my life where you know I'm struggling with something, whether it, whether it be a sin or whether it just be uh, you know, an attitude that's not right at that moment or just you know the, the, the weight of the ministry is just kind of weighing down upon me. And something happens when I get around you know, a, a group of people, a room of people that are acknowledging God together because it kind of helps my heart get lifted above whether it's the rebellion I'm currently facing or the trial I'm currently going through and together you know we, we get to worship the Lord you know together in a sense it's it's almost like that analogy that you know a coal by itself is awesome it can burn for a while but when you get them all together you know that that's when you can that's when you can have the barbecue so to speak yeah, and I think when good. Christians get together and they they're they're basically challenging one another I see this lady over here and, and and she's got tears coming down her eyes and it's real and it's genuine and and this guy's lifting up his hands and if and if I'm ever in a place where I'm not in that it challenges me, just like I hope to mm -hmm. challenge them in the same way. So together, corporate worship is so important for that reason. Not just the teaching aspect, but getting together to really stoke uh, the fires of worship in our hearts. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, now you being a pastor, kind of taking, as we're going along this route of corporate worship and what it looks mm -hmm. like, um, I, I know that the, we, we made this distinction between there's a personal side of worship where I express to God personally maybe behind closed doors, right, obviously. And then in the corporate side, is there a distinction between how I should express in the corporate setting in terms of maybe my physical expression? And because I know that there's different churches who maybe do things differently corporately. Um, but if, we're, if we are saying that there is a difference between our personal side of worship and then our corporate side of worship, how would you maybe encourage somebody to not bring maybe what they do personally into the corporate. And what I mean by this is maybe not to be a distraction. If, if dancing is the personal way that right. they express their worship to God, what if they want to bring that into the 
corporate setting, and I, maybe there are those, but I don't know, what is your opinion in terms of someone who says, well, this is how I worship God personally. Why can't I do this in front of everybody right now? Yeah, I, I, maybe people have just run into that challenging thought that maybe I would just ask yeah. your perspective on. Yeah, well, it's it's a great it's a great thing to think through because you know we do have the freedom we're alone with the Lord uh, just to pour out our hearts and obviously there's no reason to be fake when I'm in the presence of the Lord ever but especially when I'm when I'm just him and him and, because if if I'm if I'm you know not that I don't think I've ever done this but if I'm crying before the Lord and it's not real well, why am I doing that because the Lord would look at that and go what are those tears for <laughs> it's not real and genuine um, and 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 if I felt like hey it's time to to like David dance before before the Lord, well, that's that's great when it's Him and I, but every congregation is different, and we have things that in in, in the particular congregation God calls you to serve and pastor in. Um, some things are distracting, and some some things aren't. You know, I've been to churches where one person standing when the whole congregation is sitting would be distracting. Um, but I but I, I currently pastor a church where people stand, sit, they just whatever they feel like their posture wants to be before the Lord. Some will come and bow down, you know, before the Lord in front of in front of the stage or the altar, and and uh, and, and so we try to give the freedom for everyone to express. So that's not distracting. But yeah, if someone was you know had the tambourine out and they were running around, that would distract our, you know, our church setting. And so that's where, you know, I think it's an important conversation sometimes to have with people to say, hey, there is a difference between personal and corporate worship. And in this congregation, uh, what you're doing is actually getting people's eyes off of Jesus and onto you. Now, I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong. You know, everyone should be able to keep their eyes on Jesus no matter what the other person is doing around them. But but congregations are different. And if a person's heart's genuine and say, hey, I just want to worship God, a person who's genuine in that doesn't want to distract other people from worshiping God too. And so so there's a, there's a there's an opening for us to be able to sit down and say, hey, what you're doing is distracting. It's great alone and would encourage you, encourage you to express yourself any way the Holy Spirit leads when you're alone. But together, we've got to be sensitive on, you know, we have churches where some some people, they love to cry out, amen, after the sermon and with every point and other churches that would, that would distract. And so mm. you got to kind of know what congregation God has called you to be a part of. But I think the challenge is even more so for us as worship leaders or pastors yes. because, you know, we are not just worshiping the Lord ourselves, but we're also leading in that moment. We're leading these, 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 these precious people that God has entrusted to us. And so in a sense, sometimes when we lead, there has to be things we do that are maybe done in order to teach in order to teach what it looks like. You know, again, you know, there, there are times where I just feel like the Lord impressed upon my heart, hey, you need to lift up your hands right now. And it may not be because I'm in a moment where I'm like, there are times when I worship the Lord and I am, it's me that's surrendering. I am just giving this thing over to the Lord. But there's times I feel like the Lord says, hey, someone here needs to see you, you know, expressing this surrender wow. to the Lord. And, and I, I don't think that's fake. I don't think that's contrived. I think when the Holy Spirit is leading us as worship leaders or pastors, to model for our people what God is calling us to do. Um, it's, a, it's a great expression of our, our worship and obedience wow. to God that may not be so for someone in the congregation, but it's kind of a unique setting we have as a pastor who's, yes, involved in the worship and as a worship leader in that sense. Yeah, that's really good. I think that's, a, I think that's such a great encouragement for anyone who's leading worship. I know especially for me, it's just really, really good. And, and so maybe as we close this out, what general, I guess if we're, if we're going maybe backtracking to the personal side of worship and maybe there's someone watching and they're like, you know, I want that. I, I want my worship of Jesus to deepen personally for myself because I'm, I'm over here leading worship and I feel like it's, there's, there's not this connection. What general or even just practical exhortation would you give to someone who wants to pursue a personal life of worship to God? Mm -hmm. Well, I think for all of us, there's the challenge in ministry <clears throat> that because it is so routine, you know, at our church, we do three <clears throat> services on Sunday morning, the same three sets, mm. the same set three times over, the same sermon three times over. Uh, because of that, there's the challenge to have it not become routine in a job like any other job, like a guy delivering bread or, or a guy that's working at a factory. It can become just kind of routine. And that is why we have to fight to make sure it isn't. And so when someone says, I feel like it's not, the personal side isn't there, I would highly encourage them, it's time to take a day or two and just get away with Jesus and just confess that to him. You know, I know from my heart, when I, I've had over 20 years, a couple of times where I just feel like 
I'm going through the motions as a pastor. I'm teaching the passage, I'm getting three points and some illustrations, and it's like I'm doing a job. But the subtlety between a job and a ministry and a lifestyle are, are so subtle sometimes for a pastor and a worship leader. And so for me, it was time to get away and say, Lord, this is becoming routine, and I don't want it to be. So, so like Isaiah, you know, touch, touch my lips with that coal from heaven and mm. show my heart where hypocrisy has gotten in there. And I want it to be fresh and I want it to be real. And I think we all need those times. I mean, I think the way that God designed the ancient Jewish system of three times a year, them just getting away with the Lord, with the Lord and kind of reflecting on, on him and getting away from their farms and getting away from the routine. I think that is so important, obviously, not in a legalistic religious sense, but having a couple of times where, okay, I go to this conference, and, and this time I just get away by myself. And it's just a time for me to rekindle my, my, my personal worship to the Lord so mm -hmm. that it can always stay real and genuine. Because, as you know, what we do on the stage better be just an outflow of what happens in our real life. Mm -hmm. If not, there's no difference between us and the Pharisees of the first century. We're just going through the motions for religious sake. And, and God told them what he thought of it. He said, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, and in vain they worship me. And the last thing I ever want my worship to be, corporate or personal, is something that's vanity. I want it to be something that's meaningful uh, to me. And it's crazy that our worship gets to be meaningful to the King of Kings. It, it blows me away mm -hmm. that we can bring joy and a smile to the God who said, let there be light, and there was, with a heart that surrendered to him in worship. What a privilege we have to do that. I, I want to ask you, because you're a senior pastor, not like I'm informing you, you're like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, um, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're a senior pastor, you, you pastor a, a church, and... I would, what would you encourage pastors in? Maybe there's a pastor watching this right now. What would you encourage pastors in when it comes to the corporate side of worship? It's, is it just, oh, um, I'll be in my office, worship leader, you take it away. You know, is it that kind of a thing? Like, you know, hit it, DJ, or something like that, but you don't, you don't have a, an engagement in that, or is there a separation? Should there be, or what's a healthy way that you can stay engaged as a pastor in this corporate side of worship? That's a great question because I, I do feel like it's a mistake sometimes, and it's it's not a it's not a it's not a sinful mistake. It's it's with it's with the best intentions, but sometimes I feel like pastors feel like okay, well the teaching is my side of the ministry, and the worship leading that's your side of the ministry. So you figure it out. You seek the Lord. You do your job. I'll do my job. Together we we serve the Lord. There's nothing sinful about that statement. But I don't, I don't know if that's how God really would like it to be. Uh, I've always been challenged by the fact that David in the Psalms, Psalm 35 and other places, says that he worships among the congregation. So, in other words, the king of Israel, the leader of Israel, is with the congregation while they're worshiping. He wasn't back in his office writing worship songs. He, that, he had, there was a time for that. There was yeah. a time for that. Um, he, he wasn't, you know, dealing with the army general until worship was over, and then it was time to come out and give the people his political speech. When it was time to worship, David, as a worship leader, was among the congregation as they were worshiping. And, and why I think that is so important is you, as a spiritual leader of your church, you, you get kind of a, the, the mood of the room in the, in the moment to where, where God will so often, as I'm worshiping with the church before the service is going, while the worship is going on, you know, the Lord will speak to me like, hey, you need to emphasize this point over the other. You need to emphasize this more in this service than you did last service. And I'm just, I'm sensitive to the fact that the Holy Spirit is saying, this is important for this service, and it's happening in worship, where, where I'm sensing kind of where the congregation is because I'm with them. I'm, I'm not apart from them. I'm not in another room. I'm with them. And I totally get it because there is, there is the draw in my own heart to want to, you know, be in my office, to go over the notes so it's perfect. And, and I totally get that. I totally understand that. Um, I prefer the in the office going over the notes, prefer than sitting in the front row. Because the people, they just, it speaks something. It's like, why are you not into worship right now? Why are you reading this, this notepad instead of getting into worship? And I know that's no pastor's heart, but it's communicating as they sit there in the front row reading, reading their notes. So I prefer the office over in the congregation doing the same thing. But at the same time, 
first service isn't less important than third service. And, and, and second service isn't more valuable than first service. And so I'm supposed to be among the congregation and something, something is communicated while I'm in the room yeah. um, to the worship leader and to the congregation. Uh, I also, you know, I don't, I don't want as a worship leader to have them in the worship room every time. If they're a part of the church, I want them at least for one service to be sitting in the congregation Amen. with their Bible open because they're Christians yeah. and they're trying to learn. But I think for a pastor, it goes, it goes even beyond just sitting in the room while the worship is happening. Yeah. I think there's an important conversation that happens days before the worship service yeah. where you kind of know as the pastor where God is leading that service, where, where you imagine the Holy Spirit's He's Lord. He can change things and go. But Amen. but you generally have a sense. Like, we're dealing with repentance this Sunday. We're dealing with encouragement this Sunday. We're dealing with this. And to be able to communicate that to say, hey, what songs are you doing? I, listen, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have the time, nor do I want to go and pick all five songs for the worship leader and tell them what key to do it in. Listen, I, I hired that person for that reason. They're gifted in what they're doing. Yeah. But I feel like it's important as the leader to at least have some input and say, hey, here's the direction we're going, and, and, and especially for after the message. Yeah. You know, after the message, here's where we're going, and, and, and that's where, where I feel like the Lord kind of brings it to this head. I mean, you look at, the again, the worship experience of, of, the, of the Jews in the Old Testament. You know, they would enter in with thanksgiving in their heart. They would offer themselves to the Lord. But for the high priest, man, the, the goal at one day a year was to get into that holy of holies. I think when we see it that way, that we're, we're worshiping, we're learning, we're doing all these things, but the end goal for me at least at every church service is to get to the Holy of Holies where we are just in the presence of God. Amen. Now that that veil has been ripped, we can all go in and we can just enjoy his presence. But if you, if you think that will happen by accident, I think, I think you're kidding yourself as a worship leader and a pastor. Now God's sovereign and there's some moments he just does it. But I think with a little prayer and a little forethought, um, we can be the tools that God uses to help people into that moment where they can go away every Sunday, every Wednesday, and say, man, I've been in the presence of the Lord. But that takes a worship leader and a pastor that sees that, hey, we're in this together. We're in this together for what God is calling us to do. Yeah, yeah, amen. And, and it's something that I think is so important for me personally. As I look at the church service that I'm being a part of, um, I think the mentality that needs to be cultivated, and I didn't always have this mentality, but it's something I encourage worship leaders in that I think is so important, is that if you only view the 30 minutes before the teaching as worship, then you're gonna have the green room mentality and you're gonna sneak away into some room and have donuts crumbs all over your face, you know, because you're just sitting there, yeah, and you're just sitting there and, and the teaching of the word is going on, but you're not viewing that as worship. That's the teaching of the word. And, and a lot of times we have this distinction, worship and the word, which I think, of course, we can make this kind of distinction between the music and the teaching of the word part, but if you look at, from the moment the service starts to the moment that the service ends as worship, mm. from the teaching of the word being worship, from the music being worship, all of a sudden it provokes in me this unity that I wanna have with everybody in that room to say, well, I'm not gonna head off to this, I'm not gonna head off to Starbucks while the pastor's teaching. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna take in and I'm gonna, as a body. So it's just something that I think, like you were just saying for the pastor, I think for the worship leader, like you just said, it's important for them to be in there taking in the word of God and I don't know I just think viewing the whole service as worship for me was just one of those things we need never forget God wants to be worshiped in spirit and in truth it's mm -hmm. not either or it's together that he considers worship mm -hmm. where the spirit is able to flow you know which is which is seen more maybe in the musical side of the service mm -hmm. and the truth flows uh, in the teaching and of course they, they both interact but at the same time God doesn't want either or and as pastors, we shouldn't pick either or. Well, I'm the I'm the spirit leader. I'm the truth leader. You know, <laughs> yeah. we, we lead in spirit and in truth, Amen. and they're both important. Amen. Well, thank you again for being here. Thank you for pouring that wisdom from God's word um, into us. And, and just I just want to thank you again for being here, taking the time to do this. And, um, yeah, God bless you. Thank you again. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. All right.